Hello again, Mr. RG Stuff, back in the workshop, and uh, today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to have a look back over all the various sound boxes that I've made and uh, talk a bit about some of the design decisions and, and basically how I got from where I started to where I am now. Now, it all started really when I sort of accidentally bought a Decca 100 gramophone at a car boot sale. And uh, it was a great machine. I, I don't have it anymore, actually. I sold it. And uh, I think after that, I decided that uh, it'd be quite fun to make my own thing. And um, my first sound box was actually, uh, well, it was, it was basically uh, one of these um, pill containers. And um, I don't have it anymore. I'm pretty sure I threw it away. Um, this one's actually got uh, used uh, gramophone needles in. But... Um, I did, uh, I did build something around one of these. Um, to be honest, it wasn't very successful. Now, after that, I was really puzzling as to, you know, what to do, um, how to make a simple sound box. And I think um, the, the sort of key discovery for me was when I realised that a, a Pringles lid and um, a miniature CD actually fitted together I mean they're basically the same size and um, the uh, the CD's got a hole in the back and uh, the Pringles lid and in fact this one's been drilled out actually has a little spot in the middle um, so you can see the uh, center quite easily and uh, I thought you know what I can put something together um, using that and um, and I did and I uh, I did a video and it featured a sound box uh, much like this. Now I ought to say that the uh, sound boxes I'm showing today are in some cases sort of reconstructions of uh, of the ones that I had. I've gone back through my pile of uh, junk and actually uh, rebuilt them. But uh, anyway, um, it had one like this. And um, in the video, I don't think I talked about it all that much. But um, I then later did a video where I actually talked about just this sound box design and that video did really well I mean I'd have to check exactly but it certainly had more than 10,000 views so um, I was really pleased with that I thought you know what I'm onto something here now that's okay but um, it had a few components in it which were a little bit uh, hard to find so um, I built this one next and this I actually built uh, for uh, a video basically on how to make your own vinyl player and um, although basically it's a gramophone or a phonograph sound box uh, for 78s um, with uh, a smaller needle um, and uh, a light and tone arm it does play um, vinyl just fine I mean obviously don't use it on your decent vinyl um, and uh, I deliberately simplified this I, I replaced the sort of a uh, rubber spring with some bubble wrap, I replaced the the brass pulley to hold the uh, the needle with um, basically just uh, another piece of wood and some tape, and uh, this formed the sound box um, for that video. And um, this actually, again, uh, the video did very well. The video still does very well, actually, and um, it's a nice, simple design. Oh, the other thing that I replaced was uh, the the brass post there that's sort of from a motherboard just been replaced by some uh, some nuts um, on an ordinary m3 um, machine screw so um that was good um and i also i think at that point started playing around with plastic piping and, and making them sort of interchangeable so the uh, sound box wasn't sort of permanently attached to the tone arm i've spent a little bit of time tidying up the sound boxes so one thing I've done is I've wrapped a bit of masking tape around the end of this plastic tubing so it fits in the um, plumbing fitting better. I've also marked the top of the um, pipe. So that mark there is in line with the, uh, the needle. And the reason for doing that is that when it's inserted and lined up with a mark on the top of the plumbing fitting there 
uh, it makes sure that the needle is at a slight angle, so not not straight down, but at an angle, a bit like that. And because I've marked up both sound boxes the same, I've ensured that uh, the needle on both of them will be at the same angle. Now playing around with Pringles tubes made me think that maybe the diaphragm could be made from the base of a Pringles tube. And so I literally just cut the end off uh, a Pringles tube. And um, and I ha had very much the same sort of um, arrangement for the actual needle bar and the, the suspension. I mean, it's basically exactly the same. And um, I still got the uh, the CD on the back. I mean, something else that I, sh I should note was that uh, I rapidly ran out of these sort of miniature CDs. Um, so uh, I learnt to actually cut down uh, bigger CDs as well, so that um, I wasn't limited um, on, on supply of those. So that was something else, that was another sort of learning experience, and um, cutting plastic is something which uh, just seems to form part of uh, making sound boxes for me anyway. Um, so this, this worked okay, it wasn't brilliant, but it did work. Um, and uh, it sort of led me on to thinking, well, yeah, this sort of this sort of arrangement here is pretty crude. I could do better than that. So um, I built this one here, and uh, this is a lot more complicated, really. And um, it's got lots of sort of metal fittings. These are bits out of um, electrical plugs or electrical uh, connection blocks. It's got all sorts of other sort of electrical connection things here, all connected together. And uh, the sound bar, instead of using a bit of um, coffee stirrer, I'm using um, something that's uh, based around these electrical, com electrical components here, or electrical connectors, I should say. So these are sort of crimp connectors and um, I've sort of bolted a few of them together there and I'm also using the little brass inserts that come out of uh, this sort of chocolate block, chocolate block um, electrical connections and uh, to join it all together um, I'm using uh, little bits of nails so so we're cutting the ends off or cutting the heads off and uh, And sort of filing them down to make them fit. Um, there's a bit there that I've done. And uh, that's just using a, a little junior hacksaw. And I've also got some other odd bits of metal like um, this here which I think was part of um, an old video rack. So it's quite thick but it's actually quite soft as well so it should be easy to bend. This also sports um, I think the first design where I was actually able to connect the sound box um, directly to a proper gramophone. So whereas previously I just used a piece of plastic piping, I'd actually modified it so that um, it was possible to uh, um, connect it straight onto a real gramophone. And that was the start really of me testing sound boxes on real gramophones. Now I gradually improved that design a bit more until I had a back connector that looked like that. And um, that worked quite well actually. And this also shows a sound box, uh, sorry, um, a CD that's been cut down uh, to a smaller size. And you may notice it's actually, it's actually smaller than that. And that's because at this point I realized that the Pringles tubes were really a bit too big. The diameter on them was too big. And I hunted around for something a bit smaller and I found um, these sort of tubes here. Um, now, as it happens, I quite like Parma Violets, um, but you can get other flavors in these tubes as well. And um, these are cardboard too, and uh, the, uh, the sound box sort of fits on, or the sound box back fits on like that. And um, I think I was still taping them together. I mean, there's a lot of sort of electrician's tape, sort of red tape on there. You know, there's blue tape on this one here. So there's a lot of electrician's tape. So it's still just taping the backs on. And um, these uh, sound boxes or sound boxes based around this sort of size were much more suited to um, 
suited to uh, actually fitting a normal size gramophone. Now, whilst this one was definitely an improvement, it was very sort of big and clunky. Um, I didn't have the parts to make another one and I never like having something which I can only make one off. Um, so I thought I'm going to improve it and uh, I came up not with this one exactly, uh, this is a, a further improvement, but uh, basically it's a bit of that, um, or a bit of this tube here. Um, it's got uh, a back which is similar to this, in fact this was the original back for it, and um, it's got a, a similar sort of arrangement for the needle bar, but a much simpler pivot at the bottom there. And this one, I still use this one occasionally, this actually works quite well. It's also got a, a sort of plastic diaphragm made out of a CD um, case, and uh, I think that's Sukuru, which is sort of a, um, it's like, it's like a rubber that comes in a, in a packet and it sort of sets. And in fact, it's actually set really quite hard. Uh, but anyway, that was my first attempt really at making a gasket for a, a diaphragm. And in fact, the gasket also sticks the diaphragm to the sound box, which is novel maybe, but uh, yeah, maybe not the best design. But, you know, it does actually work quite well, this one. And uh, what happened with this is that uh, I, I started thinking, well, do you know what? I should really be using uh, 3D printed parts. So I designed this sort of um, back, which is basically really a sort of uh, replacement for one of these. And, um, and initially just put on the same sort of adapter on the back and used it. And that, that worked okay. And then I decided to fill it with, um, with uh, metal. And I used lots and lots of spare, I think they were M4 nuts. And I put glue and poly filler and goodness knows what. And I didn't honestly make as good a job as I'd hoped. It looks pretty, pretty rubbish really. <laughs> Um, very organic, which was not the the intention at all. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's heavy in a way that all the previous ones aren't. And um, this actually, yeah, this this worked quite well. I was quite pleased with this one. In fact, I'm still quite pleased with this one. Now, thinking about the sort of 3D printed back, it was like, well, I can do more with 3D printing, and um, it was so happened that uh, I changed 3D printers. Um, my Ormrod 2 um, died and I went and got an Ender 3. And uh, I was experimenting with uh, this sort of arrangement here and uh, also this sort of black foam um, gasket material. It's sort of, um, it's sort of sealant material really. It's about three millimeters in diameter, it's foamed rubber of some description it's very squishy and it fits in the groove basically and I thought well if I have two of those and then sort of bolt them together um, and in fact what I did was I actually stuck it in the, the gaskets um, uh, are not removable at least on my first designs um, but anyway uh, stick that in pair of those and uh, I ended up with um, with this one here which uh, basically has slightly smaller rings um, as the gaskets. Um, are, those the, are those rubber uh, or is that rubber uh, material? Now this again is not the, the first iteration of this sound box. This sound box looked a bit different. I tried a lot of different uh, diaphragms in it. Um, it's now got a, a, one of my very early, in fact my first metal one, which is not great to be honest. Um, the, the needle bar uh, has been stiffened up, which it wasn't before uh, when I first tried it. Um, it's got some weight in the back that it didn't have when it started. I think it's even got some rubber washers, um, which again, I don't think it had when it started. But essentially, I've sort of upgraded this a bit since uh, I first uh, had it to try to make it perform better. And therein lies the clue, because actually it, it performed really poorly. It, it looked the part, but it but it didn't work very well. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I thought I was on the uh, the right track there, but uh, 
but I needed um, I needed to uh, to work a bit harder. Now this one is uh, the cleaned up design, and um, I think I mentioned that I tried different diaphragms in this one, but actually. Uh, although it's got a different diaphragm in, most of the diaphragm testing was actually in this one here because this one worked better. And again, I've settled on, on the metal diaphragm for this one. Um, and uh, it works very well with it and it works very well also with a mica diaphragm. And it's got more weight built into it. And um, it's just generally better. Um, but there's still quite a lot of things which I didn't like about it. The, um, the needle bar is 3D printed, which is, is great from a 3D printed point of view, but not necessarily great from a performance point of view. And um, it's actually quite deep as a sound box. Um, so compared to, you know, let's just pick one. It's actually much deeper. Um, and actually, most of them don't have quite as long a um, sort of neck on them as that one anyway. So um, it was okay, but the tracking wasn't brilliant and uh, it's still not really heavy enough. So I thought I can do better than that. Um, so I built this one. And this is my last design. I've only had this one a, a short while. And uh, again, it's um, it has a lot of similarities with the previous one. It's cleaned up. It's got um, a better diaphragm, but not but not as good as I know I can make. It's got a much better needle bar, but again, not as good as I know I can make. And um, it's not as deep. I mean, if you compare it to this one here, you can see that's much deeper. Uh, this one's much deeper. Um, so uh, so that's an improvement. Um, so yeah, so that's that's my current uh, best design sound box, and um, you know it's uh, it's really quite similar in many respects to uh, to commercial sound boxes, other than the fact that it's made out of plastic, and um, and the weight is actually getting towards the sort of weight of a, of a real one. So so comparing, say, this one. And um, and my first, I'd say, proper sound box here. I mean, you can see it's a massive improvement. I've come a, a long way forward in this process. Um, and I've really enjoyed it, and I intend to do more. Um, so um, there we go. I just wanted to cover off all the all the different uh, sound boxes and the designs and, and the, the whys and the wherefores. And hopefully you found that uh, interesting and, and enjoyable. And uh, and I think I'll leave it there. Um, but thanks for watching. And, um, and uh, please join me in the next video. And if you haven't subscribed, then I'd be very grateful if you did. Uh, bye for now. And uh, thanks again.